Many people will know the Aston Martin DB5 as the vehicle of choice for James Bond, first appearing in the 1964 film Goldfinger. Over the years, though, many other famous faces have sat behind the wheel of this luxury motor. But when its tastes have changed, even the cars of the stars are often sold on. I went to meet a car enthusiast in Portsmouth who has restored one of these icons of British motoring with not one, but two famous former owners. Aston Martin is a name synonymous with classic British design, and of the range, the DB5 is arguably their most recognisable, being a favourite cinematic car for Agent 007. However, James Bond is not the only famous face to be associated with the brand. Well, I went up to the auctions at RM Auctions in Battersea in 2004. I had the catalogue, and I already said to a chum of mine, a neighbour, that uh, I wouldn't be looking at buying this car because um, it was the wrong colour. But I went up to look at a 4, even though a DB4, even though this one was a 5. This car came in and um, it came in at certain prices. The bidding started and um, then the bidding went from large chunks of going up to a very small one. And so I stuck my hand up and um, ultimately was half hoping someone would outbid me. And they didn't. <laughs> After that I went and paid the deposit and then I found out that the, the owner on the evening was actually Chris Evans, the TV radio chappy, and uh, he was there. So I went over and said, I think I just bought your car, Chris. The car needed extensive restorations, but Richard was happy to breathe new life into this icon and even tried to contact the vehicle's first owner. Um, had a lot of hiccups with the interior, getting someone to do it. We had someone lined up and then it kept getting put back and put back. We, in the end, we found someone else. And um, so it was four and a quarter years missing. But now we've got the car back and it's, it's, it's in its tip-top condition. Paul McCartney bought it in 1964 and he owned it to 1970. To our knowledge, and we've asked a few people to look around, there's no photographs of Paul McCartney with this car. He did have a DB6 as well, which there are photographs of him with the 6. A few, a couple, not many. But this particular car, nobody's ever found any. And I actually did try and get in touch with him and um, I wrote a very nice letter. Uh, because when I bought the car, it said that there was an original piece of leather with musical notes on it. And all I wanted to do really was establish that, um, what these musical notes were, and I was gonna replicate it in the new leather interior. But unfortunately, we never found them. I sent him two letters. I know they got to his house because somebody hand delivered them to his place in North London. And um, that's what I wanted, but he never, I understand he didn't want to get involved, so he didn't. Yeah. And the number plate is um, not the original number plate, but um, Chris Evans sourced this plate and put it on the car. The car being built in 64 and Paul McCartney being the owner, hence the number 64 Mac. When the car was built, it was fitted with the height of technology for the time, including a personal music system. When he bought the car in 64, he had on the build sheet uh, a record player, which plays 45 inch records for those youngsters who don't know what that is and um, we, uh, we had it serviced and it works and it, we can plug it in and it plays 45 inch records and it's on the build sheet. And, uh, I get as much pleasure at sharing it with people when I just might be washing it outside my house as I do uh, actually driving it. Um, you know, mum and dad will come along with Timothy or you know, whoever and I let Timothy get in the car, have his picture taken and then I take mum and dad's picture with their iPhone and that's part of it for me, it's as much fun as that. And you can't help but notice people looking at it and taking pictures from afar. And it's a privilege and it's an honour to have it. And I wondered if driving the car made you feel like a secret agent. Well, I think the fact you own a DB5 is pretty uh, special and fortunate and lucky. But the fact it was his is a double whammy bonus in my eyes, you know, I mean. And it's got the record player, which is pretty, you know, unique. Uh, it, it, the whole thing is just a privilege. I don't imagine myself as James Bond, but funny enough, I did go around the factory once at uh, Gaydon, the modern factory, the uh, Aston Martin factory, and I went out on a test drive with a guy on behalf of uh, um, Aston Martin, and I said to him, did you, do you have any celebrities drive these cars? And he said, yeah, I had Pierce Brosnan in the car once, I was taking him out when he was doing one of his films. And he said to me, just remember, I am not James Bond. This is Richard Stringer for That's TV.